This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. I'm Jean Wood. We've just finished uh, probably the last leg of the major preps for the Kentucky Derby. We'll have both the Arkansas Derby and the Bluegrass, now both grade ones for you on the program a little bit later. But we will kick things off with the closing week of racing from Oaklawn Park, their racing festival of the South. We'll go back to Wednesday and fillies and mares in the Bayacoa. Euphony moves in, they're in the gate. And they're off in the back hole. Sharp break from Euphony in the outside, but now Peyton Dora rushes up and on the inside, there goes Distinctive Dixie, followed by Punta Bolena and Ludovic as they go to the turn for the first time. Distinctive Dixie, with Chris Amy aboard, is gonna go out and take care of the pace here. She's got a length and a half on Peyton Doro. Punta Bolena is at the rail in third, then it's Euphony and Luna Vega almost side by side. About five lengths off the lead as they move around the first turn. Distinctive Dixie got the opening quarter in a leisurely 24 and 2. It's a length and a half back or so to Peyton Doro. Four lengths further back, Punta Bolena to the outside is Euphony and at the rail at the back of the pack right now, Luna Vega as they move down the back stretch. Distinctive Dixie is the pace setter here. Length and a half in front of Peyton Doro. About four lengths back to Punta Bolena, Euphony, and Luna Vega. They're not much changing in position here after a half in 48 and 3. Still a comfortable pace for the pace setter, Distinctive Dixie, as Peyton Doro chases her in second. Now Luna Vega shakes clear and she moves to the outside of Punta Bolena. Euphony's at the back of the pack as they move on to the final turn of the back hall. Distinctive Dixie leading it by three quarters. Peyton Doro trying to put a little pressure on. Here's four lengths back to Luna Vega and Punta Bolena. Euphony is not fired up at all yet after three quarters and one twelve and four. And here they come into the stretch of the Bayacoa. And Distinctive Dixie digs in Peyton Doro to her outside. It's five lengths back to Luna Vega and Punta Bolena side by side. They straighten for the run through the lane. Here's Peyton Doro to the outside of Distinctive Dixie. And these two are heads apart. Four lengths back to Punta Bolena in third. Just over a sixteenth to go. Peyton Doro on the outside. To her inside is Dix Distinctive Dixie. But Peyton Doro is going to win. Win the back hole, gets there by a neck distinctive Dixie finishing second. Punta Bolena was third, and Euphony got up to finish fourth. Peyton Dioro scoring the victory in a race that I always kind of wondered why they're even running in the sense that they've got the apple blossom at the end of the week for fillies and mares. This one kind of for second tier fillies, although this year, once you got past Zenyatta, these two races were fairly indistinguishable as Peyton Dioro scores the victory off a second last time out in Money Allowance Company to Tap Tam, who we're going to see a little bit later on in the program. Distinctive Dixie shows the way early and settles for second with long shot, 25 to one shot, Punta Bellina rounding out the top three. Peyton Dioro is a four-year-old filly, a daughter of Medallia Doro from Jealous and Jaded by Jade Hunter, bred in Kentucky by T.C. Stable and James Carter, owned by John Ferris, Mike Presley at all, trained by Cindy Jones and ridden to victory by Terry Thompson. Peyton Doro runs her record to six for 14 and four for six right here at Oaklawn with her victory covering the mile in a 16th in one minute 43.93. Next up, Thursday stakes feature the fifth season for older horses. And they're off in the fifth season. And bolting out there for the lead along the in outside rather is Grand Sensation. Total Bull moves up between horses along his side is Cryptolite, followed then by Kentucky Man. After that is Flying Private and Unamas, they move to the turn. Grand Sensation rushes out there for the lead. Total Bull is right behind him in second by a length and a half. Cryptolite running third. Another length and a half back. Flying Private's got the rail in fourth. Kentucky Man is fifth. Unamas trails the opening quarter 23 and 3. Grand Sensation has got the lead by a length. Total Bull is right behind him in second by two. Along the inside, that's Flying Private running third. Crypto Lights outside of him fourth by two. Then it's Uno Mas and Kentucky Man as they continue down the back stretch. And it is Grand Sensation they have to catch. He's opened up the lead of two on Total Bull after a half in 47 and two, a very comfortable pace. Flying Private's moving up inside now in third. It's two lanes back to Crypto Light fourth as they head for the final turn. The leader is Grand Sensation, Total Bull and Calvin Brown 
Cardwell still right there in second. At the rail, Flying Private is third. Crypto Light is fourth, followed by Kentucky Man and Uno Mas. They move to the final turn. Grand Sensation has been leading all the way, but now Total Bull wants to move up there to challenge. Crypto Light moving up on the outside after three quarters, one twelve and two. Here they come into the stretch of the fifth season. Grand Sensation leads it. Here's Total Bull to challenge him on the outside. It's two lengths further back then, and Flying Private is running third. Grand Sensation leads it. Total Bull digs in, and Total Bull takes command. Now on the outside, Flying Private's going to make the move. It's Total Bull leading it. Flying Private coming on in second. 16th to go. Total Bull the leader. Flying Private trying to get him. Total Bull, Flying Private at the wire. The fifth season goes to Total Bull by a neck. Flying Private finishing second. Cryptolite was third, and Grand Sensation fourth. Total Bull shipping in from out of town and scoring the victory in his debut on the dirt. He had won an allowance, not winners of one other than last time out, out at Santa Anita, where he had run his entire career on the synthetic for trainer Bob Baffert. Here gets to the lead fairly early in the stretch and holds sway by a half a length over Flying Private with Crypto Light back in third. Total Bull is a dark bayer brown five-year-old son of Fusaichi Pegasus from Pattern Step by Nuria, bred in Kentucky by Hill and Dale Farm, owned by Hal and Patty Earnhardt, trained by Bob Baffert, ridden the victory by Calvin Burrell. He's now three for five lifetime, a very lightly raced youngster, or middle-aged horse, actually. He's five years old, but uh, obviously handled carefully by Bob Baffert, now gets stakes credentials covering the mile on the 16th and 144 flat. We'll head into the Friday card now at Oaklawn Park. A pair of stakes races, of course, highlighted by the grade one apple blossom. But we'll kick things off with the Count Fleet Sprint. Cosmic moves in there in the gate. And they're off in the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Chief of Affairs bolts out there quickly for the lead. Custom for Carlos takes over second. Easy Dreamer third. Native Rulers at the rail fourth by two. Silver Edition is fifth and it's Riley Tucker. And uh, angled over to the rail and already about 12 lengths off the lead is Cosmic trailing the field. Down the back stretch, Chief of Affairs has the lead. Easy Dreamer to the outside second. Custom for Carlos at the rail is third. The opening quarter in 22 seconds. It's another two lengths back to Native Ruler, followed by Riley Tucker and Silver Edition as Cosmic Trails. Moving on to the turn, Chief of Affairs leading the way, Easy Dreamer second. Length and half back, Custom for Carlos running in third. Riley Tucker is now in fourth, followed by Native Ruler. And here they come into the stretch of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Half mile in 45 and one. And the leader is still Chief of Affairs. Custom for Carlos moves to the middle to challenge. Easy Dreamer is still right there in third. Down the outside in fourth is Riley Tucker, but the leader is Chief of Affairs. Custom for Carlos trying to get there. Chief of Affairs full of run. Custom for Carlos digs in. Chief of Affairs, here's Custom for Carlos in the last jump. He's going to get up and win it. Custom for Carlos wins the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap by a head. Chief of Affairs was second. Sprinters, it's really kind of traveled a little under the radar screen. He is 6 for 13 lifetime off a very solid second last time out in the toboggan. That coming in early March right here in New York at Aqueduct. I thought he ran fairly well that day behind Wall Street Wonder. Here he scores the victory from just off the pace by a neck over Chief of Affairs with Riley Tucker back in third. Custom for Carlos is a four-year-old bay son of More Than Ready from Meadow Oaks by Meadow Lake. Bred in Kentucky by David E. Hager II. Owned by Homewrecker Racing in Avalon Farm. Trained by Eddie Keneally and ridden to victory by Mike Smith. Custom for Carlos. Covers the 6 in 109.05. Next up, the Grade 1 Apple Blossom Invitational. Of course, this was the great race that didn't take place. Unfortunately, it was supposed to be the meeting point between Rachel Alexandra and Zenyatta. That was not to be. Nonetheless, Oaklawn Park still able to lure the big mare Zenyatta. Let's head back to last Friday and the Apple Blossom. And now Just Jenna and Terry Thompson move in there in the gate. And they're off in the Apple Blossom Invitational. And Be Fair quickly wants to strike out there for the lead. Tap Tam alongside of her second. Just Jenna to the middle in third, followed out there by War Echo. And Zenyatta is about six lengths off the pace as they come by the grandstand for the first time. That is B-Fair showing the way. 
War echoes the inside, Tap Tam to the middle, and then just Jenda. Another four lengths back to Zenyatta as they continue on to the first turn. The opening quarter, 24 seconds. A nice leisurely pace for B-Fair, who leads it by just over a length over Tap Tam. It's another length and a quarter back to War Echo. Then to her outside, just Jenda. And Zenyatta already showing she's winding to start running. Moves to the middle with Mike Smith. She's about six or seven lengths off the lead. As they move down the back stretch in the Apple Blossom Invitational, the half in 48 seconds. The leader is Be Fair, Tap Tam running second. Two lengths further back, Just Jenda moves up to third to the outside of War Echo. Meanwhile, Mike Smith and Zenyatta beginning to move up on the field as they head to the final turn. Tap, Tam, and Be Fair are right together. War Echo is third, then Just Jenda, and two lengths back. Here she comes. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Zenyatta. Three quarters, one, 12, and three. Here they come into the stretch of the Apple Blossom Invitational. And Zenyatta flies to the lead in the middle of the track and takes command. To the inside, Be Fair is still there, second with 10 Tap Tam. But it is Zenyatta leading away. Tap Tam is second, Be Fair running third. They're coming home under a hand ride. It is Mike Smith and Zenyatta in a triumphant return to Oakland. She wins the Apple Blossom Invitational by three and a half. Tap Tim second. Be Fair third. Just Jen to fourth. War Echo was fifth. Mile th in an eighth in a minute. Fifty and three fifth seconds. And Zanyata runs her record to 16 for 16 with a uh, rather handy victory here, scoring four and a quarter official lengths over Tap Tam, who I thought ran a fairly enterprising race in here on or near the pace every step of the way. Be fair, out of the gate in sharp order, held on for third. The winner, Zanyata, what more do you need to say? She's 16 for 16 lifetime. She won the Breeders' Cup Classic over males last fall. And there is, in fact, the possibility announced now that she may run against males again in the near future. They are looking at the possibility of the Stephen Foster for this six-year-old mare. Zenyatta is a six-year-old daughter of Street Cry from Vertigenu by Chris S. Bred in Kentucky by Maverick Production Limited, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Jerome Moss, and trained by John Sherris, ridden to victory by regular rider Mike Smith. Zenyatta covers the nine in 150.71. We'll continue now with Saturday's Racing from Oaklawn, their final day of the meeting, and we'll kick things off with the now Grade 1 Arkansas Derby. And they're off in the Arkansas Derby. A good break on the outside from line of David. Super Saver at the rail moves up into second. In the middle of the pack, that is New Madrid now in third. Inside of him is Northern Giant along with Dublin. It's two lengths further back to Berberis, then uh, Obango. Next is Nobles Plumas, and uh, at the outside, Pulsion trails the field as they move on to the turn. 22 and 3, the opening quarter mile. Lion of David showing the way by two and a half lengths. That is Super Saber and Calvin Burrell second by two. Dublin running in third at the rail. Berberus is fourth. Middle of the track, Northern Giant running fifth by a length. Doble's Promise moves up in sixth. Then it is New Madrid, Agaputuda, Obango, and Pulsion trails as they continue down the back stretch. The half in 46 and 1, a fast pace from Line of David as he leads it by four lengths. Super Saver still second, Dublin third, Berber is fourth. Moving up Northern Giant as they move to the final turn. The leader is still Line of David, Super Saver second, Dublin a length and a half back in third. Also moving up now, here comes Noble's Promise. They got three quarters, one, ten, and three, midway on the final turn. Line of David leads it by two. Moving up in the middle of the track, Super Saver and Dublin. Noble's Promise is gaining in fourth, and here they come into the stretch of the Arkansas Derby. And it is Super Saver and Dublin now. Up to challenge, Line of David. Noble's Promise is fourth, with a furlong to go. Super Saver and Dublin. Dublin to the outside, Super Saver in the middle. Line of David fights back along the rail. It's between Super Saver Dublin and Line of David at the inside. Super Saver, Line of David as they come under the wire. It's Line of David, the winner knows. Super Saver second, Dublin ran third. Uh-oh, Bango was fourth. Followed out there by Noble's Promise. 
line of David, kind of an interesting three-year-old. John Sadler's kind of been hunting around for a spot for this horse. In fact, uh, was considering several different places, including uh, Hawthorne in the Illinois Derby last weekend, but decided to go for the million dollars in the Arkansas Derby and uh, hopefully earn himself a place in the Kentucky Derby starting gate with this horse who has now won three in the row, going back to a turf maiden and a turf allowance race, both out in California. In his dirt debut, he got to the lead as he had in his most recent two starts and was able to hold sway by a neck over Super Saver, who pressed the pace in the early going. He was, you know, he relaxed nicely early when Calvin Burrell brought him out. Looked like he went, might be able to quicken. Dublin sat just third. Now, this was a racetrack that was not particularly kind to horses rallying from off the pace, and these three colts ran one, two, three every step of the way around the racetrack and were only a couple of necks apart from one another come the end of the race. But, uh, you know, kind of an interesting race, an unusual race, and that you had a horse like the winner who had never set foot on a dirt track in the past. Dublin, who I thought would probably get a bit more of a rallying move. Terry Thompson obviously choosing to keep him a little closer to the pace because the track had been less than kind to closers, but uh, obviously that did not quite work as he was in position to get the victory, uh, but could not get by the winner or super saver. So kind of an unusual renewal of the now grade one Arkansas Derby, but I think it will certainly have implications for the Kentucky Derby as Line of David is most likely to go there next in a race that appears to be potentially overloaded with speed. Line of David is a three-year-old chestnut son of Lionheart from Emma's Dilemma by Capote, bred in Florida by the Sabine Stable and owned by Ike and Dawn Thrash, trained by John Sattler and ridden to victory by John Court. Line of David covers the nine furlongs in 149.37. We'll head back to Oaklawn now once more for three-year-old fillies in the instant racing. Now my sugar bear moves in there in the gate. And they're off in the instant racing stakes. Quickly for the lead goes Best Reward along the rail decelerator. Middle of the track is Washington Bridge. Bell Shoes has the rail in fourth. Joe Marie's alongside in fifth. Vertical Vision is next. The trailer is my Sugar Bear. On the turn, Decelerator gets the lead. Best reward second. Bell Shoes with the rail is third. Joe Marie is fourth to the outside is Washington Bridge. Then Vertical Vision in my Sugar Bear, the opening quarter, 23 and 3. They head to the back stretch in the instant racing stakes, and Decelerator shows the way. Best rewards they have length back in second. Bell Shoes tucked in at the rail in third. Washington Bridge is outside fourth. Jill Marie running fifth, a length and a half. Vertical Vision is sixth, and My Sugar Bear as they continue down the back stretch. Decelerator continues to show the way through a half mile in 47 and 4. Best reward keeping the pressure on. Bell Shoes still right there in third. To the outside, Washington Bridge between horses Joe Marie. Vertical Vision and My Sugar Bears, they head to the final turn. Decelerator continues to hold the short lead on Best Reward. Bell Shoes is still right there. Washington Bridge is in a striking position now and moves up strongly into third. Midway on the turn, Decelerator leading it now, opens the lead to a length after three quarters and one thirteen. Here they come into the short stretch of the instant racing stakes with Decelerator leading the way. Vertical Vision now makes a big strong move to the outside. The leader is Decelerator, Vertical Vision now second. Bell Shoes is clear in third with a 16th to go. It's Decelerator on the outside, Vertical Vision. Bell, run, Bell Shoes trying to come on, they drive to the wire, Decelerator gets there. Vertical Vision was second, Bell Shoes finished third and Joe Marie fourth. Decelerator getting the victory. She's had a pretty productive winner at Oaklawn Park, having won the Martha Washington back in February. Fourth last time out with a poor start in the Honey Bee. Here she gets out of the gate in much better order, getting to the front. Challenged in the early stages by Best Reward, but was able to hold sway by a neck over vertical vision with Bell Shoes back in the third spot. As the odds-on favorite, Decelerator scores the victory. She is a three-year-old Dark Bayer Brown daughter of Tahir from Paris Rose by Accelerator. Bred in Kentucky by Ted O'Neill and owned by the West Rock Stable Limited, trained by D. Wayne Lucas and ridden to victory by Terry Thompson. Decelerator covers the mile in 138.20. We'll pause for a brief message and when we return, we'll be heading to Keeneland for a busy week of stakes. Please stay with us.
back to horses and courses. We'll continue now at Keeneland. We'll head back to midweek and three-year-old fillies in the Beaumont. They're at the post. And they're off in the Beaumont Stakes. Franny Freud away in good order. Grand Affair has early speed as well. Here comes Grand Affair from the outside up to take a narrow lead heading on to the main track. Franny Freud then glowing report third down toward the inside. These three separated by a half length. Franny Freud the favorite now moves up to take the lead three parts of a length now by a length clear of glowing report as Grand Affair settles into third in between horses. Tia goes fourth up on the far outside. Shanti Nela travels in fifth outward from the rail. Kawiye is next down toward the inside and Diva Delight is the trailer seven lengths off the lead 23 and one fifth seconds the time for the opening quarter Franny Freud the leader as they go to the far turn she's on top three parts of a length Grand Affair goes second on the outside glowing report is still third two lengths off the lead back toward the rail flanked by Tia then Shanti Nela fifth in between those two followed by Diva Delight and Kawiye is now the trailer coming to the quarter pole Franny Freud still under an easy hold leads at three parts of a length Grand Affair goes second by two. Shanti Naylor third between horses. Glowing report fourth toward the inside. And then Tia fifth on the outside. And they're all chasing Franny Freud who is shaken up by the rider. Opens up on a two length lead. Shanti Nayla is put to a drive in second. These two pass the eighth pole separated by two and a half lengths. Franny Freud looking like an odds on favorite should pass the 16th pole. Now with a five length margin back to Shanti Nayla. Then Diva Delight to third. Franny Freud takes the Beaumont for Garrett Gomez. And then it was Shanti Nayla home second. Diva Delight was third. Glowing Report was fourth. Franny Freud gets the victory. A nice effort by this filly to run her record to five for eight lifetime. She was a very close up second behind repeat winner Amen Hallelujah last time out in the Santa Inez that at Santa Anita back in mid-January. She's never missed the exacta while sprinting and uh, certainly looks like a very sharp filly to keep your eye on. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see her back in New York as she is, in fact, a New York bred. She scores the victory over Chantilly Nela with Diva Delight up from Tampa Bay Downs to score the third spot from off the pace. The winner, Franny Freud, is a Bay three-year-old daughter of Freud from Frankly Fran by Decord, bred in New York by Anthony Gray, owned by Paul Pompa, Stephen Yarborough, and Anthony Gray, trained by John Terranova, and ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Franny Freud covers the 7 in 126.89. We'll head right back to Keeneland Thursday's stakes feature, the Vinery Madison, a grade one for fillies and mares. Hold up, hold up. And they're off in the Vinery Madison. Dr. Zick and Witty have early speed. Dubai Majesty there toward the inside. Informed decision up on the outside, heading onto the main track. Then direct line and a gap of three and a half more lengths back to Star Larks, who's the trailer here in the early going. Dr. Zick gets over to the rail, leads at three parts of a length. Witty hard held there in second between horses in the early stages of the race as they head for the far turn. Flanked by defending champion Informed decision in her season's debut. She's third on the outside, just over two lengths off the lead. Dubai Majesty fourth back toward the rail. Joined there by direct line on the outside and Starlarks at the back. 22 and 4 fifth seconds the time for the opening quarter and Dr. Zick guides the field into the far turn. Leads Witty a length and a half in form decision. Still third up on the outside. Dubai Majesty fourth back toward the inside. Direct line still alongside her but still fifth. Starlarks is sixth and last. They're coming to the quarter pole and Dr. Zick is still the leader. Dr. Zick a length and a half to Witty. Dubai Majesty in form decision still fourth off the far turn. Still three lengths off the lead, but here she comes now, set down for the drive on the outside, but she's got to get Dr. Zick. Dr. Zick stubborn past the eighth pole. Dr. Zick by three, Dubai Majesty up the rail to second, then informed decision, and Witty past the 16th pole. The Vinery Madison is all Dr. Zick at 15 to one for Kent DeSormo. Dubai Majesty second, informed decision was home third. Witty finished fourth. Dr. Zick pulls off what has to be considered the upset of the weekend in a, in a sense in that the favorite in here was a heavy favorite informed decision who going into this race was seven for seven on synthetic tracks and uh, obviously a very dominant performer on the synthetics. But here Dr. Zick, who was in off of a handicap score last time out at Tampa Bay Downs, gets to the front and simply continues to roll by two and a half lengths. Dubai Majesty completes the exacto with a rallying move. 
a little bit of a wide trip for informed decision, but she came up quite flat for a filly that had uh, really been quite explosive in most of her recent performances. The winner, Dr. Zick, had been beaten by 16-plus lengths in the Hurricane Birdie in her only try against graded stakes company. She's earned a pretty high percentage in the win column. She's five for nine lifetime, mainly by staying out of graded stakes company. But here she gets an official grade one score on the front end in an upset. The winner, Dr. Zick, is a chestnut daughter of Milwaukee Brew from Royal Corona by Holy Bull. Bred in Kentucky by Ronald J. McPeak. Owned by Derby Lane Farm, Tom, uh, Tom and Jim Farrell at all. Trained by Joan Scott and ridden to victory by Kent Sormo. Dr. Zick covers the seven furlongs in 121.32. Next up, Friday's stakes feature the grade one makers Mark Mile on the turf. They're at the post. And they're off in the Maker's Mark Mile. There goes Picturel from the inside, Corellian from the outside, and Picturel will have the early advantage heading to the first turn. Corellian will go second, and Cherokee Artist is there down toward the inside. Passage moves up toward the outside from fourth. Court Vision goes fifth, right toward center pack, midway on the first turn. Society's Chairman is next down toward the inside. Wesley moves by to his outside, moves up one spot from next to last, heading onto the back stretch, and Rogue Victory is eighth and last, 24 and one-fifth seconds for the opening quarter. Long shot, Picturel is the leader, and Picturel has the lead by nearly two lengths up the back stretch. Corellian goes second by a length. Cherokee Artist third by a neck. And then Passage fourth on the outside by two. Court Vision fifth, placed outward from the rail. Society's Chairman sixth toward his inside. Wesley is seventh. Rogue Victory eighth and last. 47 and one for the opening half mile. Picturel with Cherokee Artist right there toward the inside. And here comes Corellian from the outside. And Corellian draws alongside of Picturel midway on the far turn. Court Vision will have to go toward the center of the course from fifth, just outside of Passage. Cherokee Artist is there and tight down toward the rail. Looks for more running room now between horses and Corellian. Corellian is the leader, chased by Passage and Court Vision. And here comes Court Vision chasing after Corellian, society's chairman, then Passage back toward the inside. Final furlong of the Maker's Mark Mile. Corellian has the lead. Court Vision needs to find more. Corellian with the advantage, a 16th to come. Corellian and Julian Leperu down to the line to take the Maker's Mark Mile. Court Vision was home second. Society's chairman third, Wesley rallied for fourth in one minute, 34 and 33 hundredth seconds, a new stakes record. Carillion getting the victory and, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of a turning of the tables here as well as he was nosed by court vision in the Shadwell turf mile here last fall and uh, last time out. He managed to nose Gio Ponte in the Tampa Bay Handicap, of course, that one in his prep race for the Dubai World Cup. But Corellian, a very solid 10 for 21 lifetime campaign. He's got good early speed. He likes to show it going a mile on the turf. He gets out into, uh, into a bit of a rolling position and can be tough to run down, as Court Vision found out here, as the favorite running second society's chairman rallies into third. The winner, Corellian, is an eight-year-old Bay Gelding, a son of Bertrando from Leaning Tower by Theatrical, bred in Kentucky by the Green Lantern Stable and owned by the Breeders, trained by Rusty Arnold and ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. I'm not certain, but I would uh, venture a guess that Corellian is the oldest grade one winner in the United States this year. And under Julian Leperu, he covers the mile in 134.33. We'll continue now with stakes racing action at Keeneland going into a busy Saturday and kicking things off the Shaker Town, sprinting on grass. Oh. 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 And they're off in the Shaker Town. Silver Timber with early speed. Chamberlain Bridge right there. Moralist up on the outside. These three to the front. Grand Adventure fourth out in the center of the course in the opening strides as they head for the far turn. A steel trap is next to last and Free Brave is the early trailer. Silver Timber back up front. The leader by just a neck between horses. Moralist draws alongside. Chamberlain Bridge drops back. Third toward the inside. Three lengths off the lead now. Grand Adventure on the outside of that one. A gap of nearly three more back to a steel trap and Free Brave opening 
opening quarter in 21 and two fifth seconds and Moralist is the leader and here comes Grand Adventure right off the leader's flank. One length separating the top two now as they turn for home. Silver Timber third toward the inside. Chamberlain Bridge is fourth running four lengths off the lead. Swings toward the outside along with Free Brave. They're coming to the eighth pole and Moralist has the lead. Grand Adventure is still second. Silver Timber then Chamberlain Bridge who's third now on the outside. Here's Grand Adventure. Final furlong at the Shaker Town to take the lead. Silver Timber coming on. Grand Adventure. Silver Timber. Silver Timber. Yes! Gets up to take it by a half length over Grand Adventure in the Shaker Town. An unusually run race is, uh, was the Shaker Town as uh, Silver Timber, a familiar fa face in the New York scene, was claimed last year down in Florida for $25,000 just about a year ago. And uh, he showed good speed. He got out of the gate in good order. Looked like he might be going to engage right for the lead. Julian Leperu took him back, almost appeared to be dropping out of things a little bit, but he pulled him wide. He rallies nicely to score by a neck over Grand Adventure. Moralist completes the order of the top three. He was the one that had managed to wrestle the lead from Silver Timber in the early going. The winner, Silver Timber, is a gray or roan gilded son of prime timber from River Princess by El Wahosh. Bred in New York by Says Who Thoroughbreds, owned by Michael Dubb at High Grade Racing Stable, trained by Chad Brown, and ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. Silver Timber covers the five and a half on the turf in 101.87. Next up, sprinters in the Commonwealth Breeders' Cup at Keeneland. And they're off in the Commonwealth. Ravallo away in good order. Imperial Council right there as well in the opening strides. And here comes Imperial Council up to take a narrow lead. Ravallo tucked away down toward the rail now heading onto the main track. A close up second to contest that early pace. And then Congressional Page goes third on the outside. Together, Indy fourth against the rail. Not for Silver is fifth and last and running four lengths from the front. Back up front, Ravallo on the inside. Imperial Council on the outside. They continue to go side by side to the far turn. Two lengths in front of Congressional Page, who's third by a neck. And then together, Indy fourth and not for Silver fifth and last as they move into the far turn. And up front, Imperial Council now puts ahead in front, but Ravallo still right there, and Congressional Page talking those two from third to the outside, now looks toward the center of the track. Together, Indy is down toward the rail in the fourth position, a length and a half off the lead, not for silver, fifth and last, they're coming to the quarter pole. And still, as they turn for home, Ravallo and Imperial Council with Congressional Page in third. Together, Indy looks for an open lane behind that trio, not for silver is fifth, they're coming to the eighth pole. Imperial Council, Congressional Page, together, Indy far outside, and Ravallo backs up down toward the rail to third. Final eighth mile of the Commonwealth. Not for Silver runs late outside of Together Indy. And still, Congressional Page toward the inside. But Together Indy gets the best of them all and takes it for Kent DeSormo. Together Indy to take it from Congressional Page. Close for third in the Commonwealth. Together Indy, another little bit of an upset in here. His last couple of races had been on the turf, going all the way back to last summer's Tap the Admiral at Saratoga. But his form on dirt prior to that had been fairly solid. Here he tries the all-weather surface for the first time, handles it quite nicely, rallying nicely, getting up off the rail under Kent DeSormo to score over Congressional Page with Imperial Council back in the third spot. The winner together, Indy, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old son of Not For Love from I Ain't PT by AP Indy. Bred in New Jersey by Rock Talk Farm Limited and owned by the R.A. Hill Stable in Vic Fontana. Trained by George Weaver and ridden to victory by Kent Sormo, together Indy covers the seven in 122.34. Next up, we'll head back to the turf. Three and up, fillies and mares in the Jenny Wiley. <laughs> And they're off in the Jenny Wiley, forever together, away in good order, but now drops back as Wasted Tears moves forward with Caribbean Sunset, also there in the opening strides, right alongside the leader, and then Quiet Harbor. It's going to be Wasted Tears and Rajiv Mirage against the rail now, leading it by almost a full length, the Caribbean Sunset, break of two and a half. Back to Quiet Harbor in third as they move into the first turn. Forever Together is fourth right at mid-pack, tucked away toward the inside of Hot Cha-Cha, who's fifth up on the outside, heading onto the back stretch. Then Salve Germania next to last, and Treat Gently is seventh and last. 23 and three-fifths seconds the time for the opening quarter.
Wasted Tears will set the tempo and leads it by two lengths off the first turn. Caribbean Sunset goes second by two. Quiet Harbor third by a length, then forever together. There goes Salve Germania, moving three lanes off the rail out toward the center of the course. Moves up into the fourth position now to challenge for third. But up front, Wasted Tears is the leader through a half in 47 and three-fifth seconds. Wasted Tears leads at a length and a half. Caribbean Sunset second by a half length. Quiet Harbor is third. Salve Germania fourth on the outside. She'll be caught three wide around the far turn. And Forever Together is fifth back toward the rail, nearly three lengths off the lead, flanked by Hot Cha-Cha and Treat Gently is last. Just over a quarter mile to come. Wasted Tears is the leader by two lengths. Caribbean Sunset second. Forever Together third toward the inside. Now changing lane. Salve Germania fourth on her outside. Forever Together tries to get on track, but she's got to catch Wasted Tears. Here comes the Gray Mare. Forever Together on the outside. Final furlong of the Jenny Wiley. Can Forever Together do it? Hot Cha-Cha runs late from third. Wasted Tears still has the lead. Forever together, Wasted Tears, Wasted Tears hanging tough, Wasted Tears turns back the challenge and wins the Jenny Wiley for Rajiv Mirage. Forever together was home second in her season's debut. Hot Cha Cha across the line in third. Wasted Tears, five in a row now for this filly who won the Honey Fox last time out down at Gulfstream Park and here pulls off a bit of an upset at just under five to one as she scores over former champion on turf forever together who rallied well, appeared to have the winner measured, but Rajiv Marat had uh, divvied out her speed rather carefully and had just enough left to hold sway by a half over forever together. Hot cha-cha rallies from off the pace to finish third. Wasted Tears is Dark Bay or Brown Mare, a daughter of Najram from Wishes and Roses by Grainton, bred in Kentucky by Bart Evans, owned by Bart Evans, trained by Bart Evans, and ridden to victory by Rajiv Marat. Wasted Tears covers the mile in a 16th on the turf in 140.86. We'll head right back to Keeneland and their big stakes feature on Saturday, of course. Three-year-olds going nine furlongs in the $750,000 Toyota Bluegrass. And they're off in the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. Patty O'Prado away quickly along with Aiken Knight to his outside. Odysseus right there toward the inside. And Odysseus is quick to move up and challenge Patty O'Prado for the top spot. They are in close quarters side by side heading into the first turn. Odysseus will have the advantage. He moves up with a ground saving trip and takes the lead by a length to Patty O'Prado in second. First dude is third. Aiken Knight fourth on the outside. Interactif is fifth around the turn. Make Music for Me is sixth on the outside. Stately Victor is seventh back toward the rail. Pleasant Prince is eighth. The gap of four more to Kodoy, ninth and last, 23 and four-fifths seconds the time for the opening quarter. Odysseus and Patty O'Prado continue their tussle for the lead with Odysseus leading it by just a half length. First dude is third, Aconite fourth, traveling out in the center of the track, just over two lengths from the front. A gap of three more back to Interactif who is in the fifth position, headed for the far turn. Stately Victor, make music for me, Pleasant Prince and Kodoy last. 47 and four-fifth seconds for the opening half mile. Odysseus is the leader. Patty O'Prado is still alongside, and Kent DeSormo calls on Patty O'Prado for more run midway on the far turn. Aiken Knight is third, first dude is fourth. Interactif is still running in fifth. A good five lengths off the leader. Stately Victor then make music for me, and Patty O'Prado opens up on the lead by two lengths, a quarter mile to come. Aconite put to a drive in second. Odysseus drops back. Stately Victor, first dude, and Interactif, who swings wide off the far turn. They've got to catch Patty O'Prado coming to the eighth pole. Stately Victor, the long shot in with a chance. Interactif is lingering third. Stately Victor, final furlong of the Toyota Bluegrass, runs right by Patty O'Prado. Alan Garcia and Stately Victor, a 40 to 1 upset in the Toyota Bluegrass stakes. Patty O'Prado, second, first dude, third. Inter Interacti fourth, the time one minute, 48 and three fifth seconds. And uh, numerically, certainly the upset of the weekend here on Horses and Courses, a stately victor scores the victory from off the pace going away. And actually, you know, he, he ran away and hid from these horses, going off by over four lengths away from Patio Prado, who had engaged for the lead right out of the starting gate. 
with First Dude also sitting a patient trip just off the pace and holding on to the third spot. A rather strangely run race in that Odysseus, who had done some fairly solid running from off the pace in his prior performances, went right to the front in his, tr his debut on the synthetic track. I'm not sure if it was a matter of wanting the lead in the early going or if he just got out of the gate early and they quickly and they decided to go on with him. And he certainly didn't handle things well once he came under pressure. He backed out of things rather dramatically at five and a half to one, completing the uh, the field, finishing ninth in the field. So obviously not a uh, not a stunning performance for Odysseus, and one that may certainly leave him on the outside looking in come the first Saturday in May. Interestingly enough, the top two finishers in here, uh, Stately Victor broke his maiden on the Saratoga turf after a disappointing performance on the main track in his career debut. Patty Prado also uh, involved on the turf at Saratoga last year didn't break his maiden until his previous start to this, but it was in a stakes race and a very sharp performance on the turf down in Florida at Gulfstream. So kind of an unusual path, as it were, but it does appear that both of these Colts may end up earning a starting berth in the Kentucky Derby off of this performance. So a little bit of an unusual route to the Triple Crown for a number of runners this year, including Stately Victor, who drew clear to win nicely at 40 to 1. He broke his maiden at Saratoga last September and had not hit the board in the interim. Stately Victor, is a three-year-old Bay Colt, a son of Ghost Zapper from grade one winner Collect the Cash by Dynaformer. Bred in Kentucky by Adina Springs and owned by Thomas and Jack Conway, who are Kentuckians and most certainly likely to head to the Kentucky Derby. Trained by Mike Maker and ridden to victory by Alan Garcia. Stately Victor covers the nine and 148.69. We'll pause now for one more brief message. When we return, more great stakes from around the country. Please stay with us. Horses and Courses will continue now at Gulfstream Park, where the stakes feature on Saturday was the South Beach on turf. And they're all in line. They're racing in the South Beach and off to a good start. Way with words broke the best and goes out to the front. Here's Noisy Feet moving through on the inside to show some early speed. And West Hope on the far outside is involved early too. Then it's Merryweather Jessica who's wide going into the turn and running along in fourth. Ocalina the favorite, fifth and on the inside and four and a half lengths off the lead. Way with words is second last early on. The trailer is Rose Diamond as they make their way to the back stretch. Noisy Feet is the leader by a length and a half. With West West Hope running in second through a quick quarter of 22 and 1. Gap of another three to Merriweather Jessica. Sandy's ready between horses and Akalina just to the inside of them. Way with words has four and a half lengths to make up. The trailer Rose Diamond is seven lengths off the lead as they continue up the back stretch. Noisy feet by ahead. West Hope right alongside in second. Merriweather Jessica just off the leaders. Akalina's down on the fence, a length and a half off the lead. Sandy's ready, nudged along for more. Way with words is circling up with a run on the far outside. And Way with words in high gear, now moving four wide. And then comes Rose Diamond as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. And Way with words has circled the field to take the lead. Way with words in front, opening up a two-length lead here. Over noisy feet, Sandy's ready 
Lee, Meriwether, Jessica Acalina's in a tight spot, but Way With Words and Jose Lascano have run away. And Way With Words will win the South Beach with ease. Acalina second, Sandy's ready third, then Rose Diamond. Way With Words scoring the victory over Acalina, drawing clear very nicely. She got to the lead near the top of the stretch and simply continued to draw away. Acalina left with a little too much to do late as the odds on choice. After a stumbling start, she completes the exacta with Sandy's ready back in third. The winner, Away With Words, was third off the layoff. She tried graded stakes company last time out on the dirt in the Hurricane Birdie to no avail. Prior to that, had run uh, fairly, or last time out rather, against Scolera fairly well in the Hurricane Birdie on the main track without much success. But obviously better on turf is Way With Words. A bay mare, a daughter of Cifapiano from Swiftly Tilting by Belong to Me, bred in New Jersey by Margaret C. Schwartz and George Schwartz, owned by George L. Schwartz and trained by Mary Epler. Ridden to victory by Jose Lescano, Way With Words, covers seven and a half on the turf and 127.53. Next up, Phillies and Mares on the turf at Laurel in the Dahlia. We'll join the Dahlia in progress. 23 and 4 for the opening quarter on the firm going for Farina. Farina sets a reasonable pace out there, length and a half in front. From Giddy Up, Gadfly in second, Sales Tax third, Julia Tuttle is fourth, Sar Treaty fifth, My Main Star, and Million Seller 47 and three half mile. For Farina, who's just sailing along pretty easily into the far turn. From Giddy Up, Gadfly second, Sales Tax is third. Julia Tuttle is asked to quicken up from the inside in fourth. Julia Tuttle lingers in mid pack in fourth, and My Main Star is fifth, Sar Treaty no fire, and Million Seller to the top of the stretch and they make the turn for home with Farina who's got something left Farina and Louis Garcia three lengths clear. Julia Tuttle on the inside struggles with sales tax to try to grab a piece now and My Main Star on the far outside giddy up gadflies backed off Farina here comes My Main Star on the outside. My Main Star has the turn of foot. Horatio Caramanos and My Main Star to take it a length and a half off the pace for Farina second and sales tax is third and Julia Tuttle My main star getting the victory. Another horse that uh, has lightly raced on the turf, as was uh, the winner of the South Beach. My main star had only tried the turf once before, but it was a winning performance right here at Laurel last fall. They kept her busy over the winter and a couple of the stakes on the main track, and she was in form and ready to go, scoring by a length and a quarter over Farina and sales tax in the first stakes race of the Laurel season. Uh, and obviously down in Maryland after having had such a uh, snowy winter, they're very happy to be back on the grass as early as possible. The winner, my main star, is a dark bayer brown mare, a daughter of deputy commander from Olatha by Ms. Wacky, bred in Kentucky by John Sullivan, Sexton, and I'm sorry, Sandra and Hargis Sexton, Owned by Gary Capuano, Paul Fowler and Partners, trained by Gary Capuano and ridden to victory by Horatio Caramanos. My main star covers the mile in the 16th and 142.12. We will head to Woodbine now for the stakes feature on Sunday afternoon, Sprinters in the Jacques Cartier. They're off in the Jacques Cartier stakes. Written in stone, Al Brujo and Hollywood hit is flaunting his speed. Hollywood hit. Comes on and takes the lead by a length and a half. Monty's best comes on at the rail. Second, El Brujo is in third position. And Written and Stone is fourth. Then there's a break of four and a half lengths to last year's a sprint champion in Canada field commission. The opening a quarter mile was in 22 seconds flat. And it's Hollywood Hit who takes them into the far turn. Monty's best shadows in second. El Brujo is third, just two lengths off the lead. Written in stone, rides the rails to the quarter pole. Field commissions getting underway from five and a half lengths off the lead. And it is Hollywood hit inside the quarter pole. 44 and two for the opening half mile. And it's Hollywood hit. As they come to the last eighth, here comes El Brujo on the outside. Field commissions trying to join the fray. Also right there is Monty's best. 
Hollywood hit clean to the lead. Field commission is flying on the outside, and it's Hollywood hit all the way on the front end to win the Jack Cupche over a closing field commission. Al Brujo was third. Hollywood hit. This is a horse that really came to hand very sharply last year up at Woodbine towards the end of the season. And here comes back first time out of the block for the year, scoring and nicely by a half length is the odds on choice over the well established form of field commission with El Brujo back in the third spot. The winner, Hollywood hit, now five for ten lifetime, is a dark bear brown gelded son of Cactus Ridge from solid hit by time for a change. Bred in Oklahoma by C.R. Trout owned by Peter Redekop and trained by Danny O'Callaghan, ridden to victory by James McElhenney. Hollywood hit, covers the six and 108.99. We'll head out to the West Coast now for a pair of stakes races at Santa Anita, kicking things off. Three-year-old fillies in the La Puente. We will join the La Puente in progress. It's a compact field that goes past the 5 8 and it's still Ace of Aces. Got it all his own way out now. Now here comes Dream Nettie to put a little bit of pressure on as they run to the half mile pole. Fantastic pick is another length and a bit back in third. They have been followed by Al Mirage King. Then we come back to Runaway Bandito. Lucky Rave is on the far side. In behind that turns my head, who's four and a half off the leaders and still bogey the trailer. Coming to the top of the lane now, an ace of aces taken on by Dream Netty. These two get to the top of the lane together. Fantastic pick is coming to tackle. Lucky Rave, red cap on the outside, is in with a shot too. Just behind that, runaway Bandito. Homeward bound and Dream Netty up to take the lead now on the inside. Ace of aces can find no more. Running on late, Lucky Rave, fantastic pick. They come for home and Dream Netty's in front. Lucky Rave finishing starkly, but Dream Netty will win it. Dream Netty has won it. Lucky Ray was second. Bogey came like a rocket late to snatch third. And it's close for fourth. Runaway Bandito and Ace of Aces. Dream Netty getting the victory here on or near the front end just about every step of the way. Engaged out of the gate by Joe Talamo. Lucky Rave ends up settling for the second spot with an off-the-pace move. She broke a little bit sharply, taken back, and re-rallied well. Bogey completes the order of the top three with a late move after a slow start. It was Ace of Aces finishing fourth who did press Dream Netty in the early going. The winner, Dream Netty. First time turf rooting, and obviously it proved to be uh, the ideal situation for him. He is a Bay Gelding, a son of Dixie Union, from Tellet by Stormcat, bred in Kentucky by Claiborne Farm, owned by William DeBerg, Jerry Hollendorfer, and George Todaro, trained by Jerry Hollendorfer, and ridden to victory by Joe Talamo. Dream Netty covers the nine furlongs on the Santa Anita turf in 148.80. We'll head back to Santa Anita for the running of the Las Cienegas for Phillies and Mares on Sunday. Oh, away they go. Got to have her broke fast, but did break a little awkward there, and it looked like Annihilation had a spot of trouble. Drop back last. Unzip me is sprinting to the lead on the inside of Checkers. Those two absolutely fly. It's four lengths further back to Berg Berg. Inside of that comes Nada Shiko. Then we come back to Gotta Have Her, is now six lengths off the leader. Shahan inside of her, and Annihilation is last. Past the half mile they go, and unzip me in front three parts of a length. Checkers is now cutting into that lead on the far side. The rest of them closing in. Berg Berg is right there. On the inside we have Nada Shiko, pretty keen to go on. Between those two, Jahan, Gotta Have Her, is back second last, gives them five length start, and the trailer Annihilation. They come to the top of the lane and Unzip Me goes on, leads it now by over a length. Checkers in second, Berg Berg in the gold colors. Gotta have her, gonna come with her run on the grandstand side. Nada Shiko is down at the rail, then Jahan and Annihilation coming for home and Unzip Me kicks away for home now. Gotta have her, starts her run down the center, but Unzip Me is opened up to lead by five. Checkers and Gotta have her are chasing gamely second and third. Unzip Me is gonna go all the way. Unzip Me and Joe Tal Alamo, very impressive in the last Cienegas. Check is a good second. Got to have her had to settle for third. Then Annihilation and Jahan. 
unzip me scoring the victory and very nice effort by this horse who has now won four in a row including the irish o'brien on the turf here as well scores the win on the front end from the chasing checkers who really put a put a lot of heart and soul into this race and unfortunately was not quite able to catch the rival gotta have her favored in the field at even money off a second place finish in the breeders cup turf sprint last year comes back ran i thought a very good a solid effort unfortunately she did stumble a little bit out of the gate came up a little bit wide in the late going obviously first time back off of a long layoff i wouldn't be at all surprised to see her improve the winner unzip me is a four-year-old chestnut filly a daughter of city zip from escape with me by arazi bred in california by the harris farm and donald valpredo owned by harris farm and partners trained by Martin Jones and ridden to victory by Joe Talamo. Unzip me covers the six and a half furlongs on the downhill turf course in 112.80. We'll head back home to New York now for the stakes race on Saturday afternoon at the Big A. Three year old Phillies in the Cumley. And they're off. CC's Paladin and Anchorage and toward the outside, Volare Cantari is there. Also forwardly placed, it shall be doggone. Up the back stretch now, and Volare Cantari and Anchorage head to head for the lead. She'll be gone, doggone. Backs off a bit to run back in third position. Touching Beauty is with the pace on the outside, fourth. A length and a half back. And then it's Spiteful Affair, who's running along in fifth position, followed by Roman Chestnut, who's now sixth. Cece's pal, seventh and a break of four. Back to the trailer, Indian Burn, down the back stretch one. Anchorage sharing the lead here with Volari Cantari. They get a sensible quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. She'll be doggone up close, on hold third. Touching Beauty in the clear fourth. Cece's pal's made a move. Up to be fifth at the half mile pole, and then the clear on the outside. Then Spiteful Affair is in behind horses. Roman Chestnut has now dropped about seven lengths from the lead. Indian Burn is still trailing behind a 47 and two half mile. It's still Anchorage and Volari Cantari. One, two. Here comes Touching Beauty. Here comes Cece's Pal. She'll be doggone looms just in behind, as does Spiteful Affair, as they come to the top of the stretch. Anchorage is fully extended now. Volari Cantari is now tapped out. Then on the far outside, Cece's Pal coming on through between horses, Touching Beauty. And oh, oh, she'll be doggone head to check. She almost went down. Oh, oh, that was a really tough break there for she'll be doggone. Now drop completely out of it and eased. In the meantime, they come to the wire. And here's Touching Beauty. And here on the outside is Spiteful Affair. But Touching Beauty holds on. Spiteful Affair finishing second there. Followed by CC's pal and Indian Burn after a scary incident in mid-stretch there between Anchorage and she'll be doggone. But uh, neither of them appears to be injured. And we're happy for that. Touching Beauty scores the victory at near the pace, uh, sitting a stalking trip under Mike Leslie and guided to a half a length winner win over Spiteful Affair, who rallied very strongly. CC's pal completes the order of the top three in a race that uh, at least mid-pack and uh, heading into the far turn was a little bit on the rough side. Uh, we had a little bit of problems there as she'll be doggone, who was the favorite in the field. Comment line reads, eliminated at the 3 16th pole. And uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty heavy uh, heavy analysis, but quite frankly, seemed to be in, in fact quite true. It looks like she be, she be doggone was uh, trying to make a bit of a bid, and she was really pushed out of position rather dramatically by Anchorage. The stewards did not end up taking any action, I suspect, perhaps because Anchorage finished sixth and uh, she'll be doggone finished seventh in the race. They finished fairly close to one another in terms of their placing, but uh, it was a long, long way back to Shelby Doggone, uh, who ended up essentially cantering across the finish line in seventh. The winner, however, Touching Beauty, a very nice filly. She's coming up from uh, South Florida and last, uh, last year was second to the very good Awesome Maria in Graded Stakes Company at Belmont Park, so I wouldn't be surprised to see her continue to improve her form. She is a bay daughter of Tappet from Victory Road by Ikari. Bred in Kentucky by Gainesway Thoroughbreds and Winchell Thoroughbreds, owned by Gainesway Farm and Joseph Cornacha, trained by Jimmy Jerkins and ridden to victory by Mike Luzzi. Touching Beauty covers the mile in 137.90. That wraps up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us once again next week as we take a look at great stakes racing from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races. <laughs>